On May 2, 2011, President Obama announced that Osama bin Laden, Taliban leader and mastermind behind the September 11th terrorist attack, was killed by the United States Navy SEAL team. The central CIA orchestrated this historic event by employing a new stealth drone to gather intelligence for months before the raid. The drone also provided President Obama and members of his administration with live video of the SEAL team descending upon Laden's compound. This achievement shows the importance of drones in the military. Today, I will argue that the United States government should increase the use and development of drones. The U.S. Department of Defense Dictionary defines an unmanned aerial vehicle or drone as a powered aerial vehicle that does not carry a human operator, uses aerodynamic forces to provide vehicle lift, can fly by themselves or be piloted remotely, can be ex expandable and can carry a lethal or non-lethal payload. The military began to rely on drones during Desert Storm, but the concept of utilizing drones in battle started to take shape during World War II. In 1934, silent film star and World War I pilot, fighter pilot Denny opened a hobby shop in Hollywood that specialized in recreational radio-controlled aircraft. His pastime caught the attention of the U.S. Army, and in 1939, they requested that Denny start the mass production of his aircraft so it could be employed as a target drone in battle. In 1984, the Pentagon awarded a defense contract to Leading Systems Incorporated, a promising company that was in the midst of employing innovative technology to build an unmanned re recon reconnaissance aircraft they called Amber. In 1996, modifications to Amber were complete, and it was sold to the DOD, where its title was changed to MQ-1 Predator, and it was used in Desert Storm. The Predator's successful integration into the United States Air Force and the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001, led the Department of Defense to heavily invest in acquisition and development of various drones. The result was a substantial increase of the Pentagon's drone fleet, 167 drones in 2002 compared to 7,500 drones in 2011. The current fleet of drones included the handheld RQ-11B Raven and the MQ-9 Reaper. In 2004, the RQ-11B Raven was purchased by the Air Force and is currently employed by all military branches. The four-pound Raven fits into a soldier's backpack and can be deployed by hand when ground troops need real-time imagery to improve their situational awareness. The MQ-9 Reaper joined the Air Force's fleet of drones in 2007. The mission is simpler to the Predator's mission, but is able to carry a larger and more sophisticated payload. Today, Pentagon's fleet of drones accounts for one-third of the U.S. military's aircraft. Furthermore, the prevalence of drones became apparent when, in 2010, the Air Force reported they trained more pilots to fly drones than traditional aircraft. Drones, UAV surveillance, and strike operations save American lives. Colonel Eric Mathewson, director of Air Force's Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Task Force, stated, Drones have done more than any other weapon system to track down insurgents and save American lives in Iraq and Afghanistan. Unlike traditional aircraft, drones like Predator and Reaper can hover at an altitude of 50,000 feet for up to 24 hours without being detected by the enemy. Moreover, quantitative data reviewed by the Harvard Kennedy School of Government links drone strikes to an overall decrease in the number of IED attacks, suicide bombers, and other violent acts by terrorists. As a result, the number of American and non-militant deaths and injuries due to terrorist attacks has decreased. Drones, UAVs, are cost-effective alternatives to manned aircraft. In 2010 interview, Weatherington explained that unmanned systems provide the equivalent cap capability at a fraction of the operating cost of legality systems. The Air Force's E-3 Sentry is a prime example of costly legacy systems that have parallel missions to the Predator and other drones that are currently in use or under development. Similar to the Predator, the primary mission of the Air Force's E-3 Sentry is intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. However, the cost of operating the 33-year-old century is approximately nine times more, $29,513 per hour, than operating the Predator, which is only $3,234 per hour. Furthermore, drones, UAV, are cost-efficient because they require less training and overall manpower than manned aircraft. 
An Air Force report is a training 15 fighter pilots average at $685,000 and 51 cents, while training 15 drone operators average at $13,000. Drones can also fly longer missions than manned aircraft since it is not restricted by pilot's endurance. Another pilot can relieve UAV simply by standing up and stepping away from the controls. Drones create a military that is more capable of protecting its citizens from internal and external threats. On January 6, 2012, President Obama explained the Pentagon's new defense strategy, which involves downsizing the military and increasing funds for rising technology such as drone warfare. He announced, our military will be leaner, but the world must know, the United States is going to maintain our military superiority with armed forces that are agile, flexible, and ready for full range of contingencies and threats. The new defense strategy addresses the nation's economic crisis by reducing the number of personnel in the military and phasing out useless weaponry created with a Cold War mentality. Today the enemy is different, so the military tactics must change too. Terrorists do not wear uniforms, engage the U.S. in dogfights, or comply with standard rules of engagement. Protecting U.S. citizens is dependent upon our military superiority and ability, which is most effectively accomplished through gathering intelligence by utilizing drones. Opponents claim that drone strikes by the CIA are illegal. Vince Warren, executive director of the Center for Constitutional Rights, alleged, alleged the assassination of Anwar al-Awlaki by American drone attacks is the latest of many affronts to domesticated and international law. The belief maintains that CIA personnel cannot legally kill terrorists because they are not members of the armed forces. However, Drone strike strikes are permitted by law, national and international. John Brennan, White House counterterrorism, argues that we are engaged in armed conflict with Al-Qaeda. The United States takes the legal position that, in accordance with international law, we have the authority to take action against Al-Qaeda and its associated forces without doing a separate self-defense analysis each time. Brennan's justification stems from a presidential order signed by President Ronald Reagan that gives CIA personnel legal authority to perform counterterrorism missions. In addition to legality, opponents claim that unmanned aircraft has desensitized war. Susan Brooks Thistlewaite, president of Chicago Theological Seminary, believes that drones distance military personnel and American citizens to such a degree that war has become enticing. In her article, Drone Wars, The Temptation of Automated Conflict, Brooks contends, the more war comes comes to resemble a video game, the more we are morally deadened to its real cost. However, she fails to take into account the, dis the differences. Adam Elkis, a foreign policy analysis analyst with the Center of City Security Policy, rejects her view, stating, air-powered drones included has not erased emotion from war. As long as humans are involved in conflict, these forces will continue to exert themselves on the theory of practice of war. Classic push-button war is unlikely, just as the drone pilots who experiment experience significant emotional turmoil from the consequences of the strike. UAV pilots are greatly affected by the missions they carry out. Unlike fighter pilots, drone pilots can see the death and destruction they cause in graphic detail from the high-resolution images the UAV cameras provide. Additionally, 30% of drone pilots are clinically depressed in the high-stress war environment for 12 hours when driving home to be with their families. In conclusion, the advantages of unmanned aerial vehicles are clear, so much so that the Federal Aviation Administration is currently developing guidelines that will allow civilians to operate them. Soon, law enforcement, farmers, and utility companies will be able to benefit from the drone technology that was introduced by the military. These are my references, and thank you so much. Do you have any questions?